out again. Get out of my um, uh, financial terrorist uh, agitator mode, please. And uh, introduce our next speaker, who is going to be Emma Sutton. Thank you. So, you won't find, if, if, if you're tweeting that person, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go stand to one side. Yes, I will. Yeah, right. okay, you ready? Yeah, I am, absolutely. Uh, so this talk is about my passion for wisdom, and it's definitely not a thirst for knowledge, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I love learning new stuff, I love being able to do something tomorrow that I couldn't do today. Um, and when I learn new stuff, I really want to share it with people. So I try and give it to them, and they're a bit like, I don't want to know. Um, they're not really interested in reading and going on courses and trying new things and coming to better culture, and I'm like, what's going on? So I've kind of studied this a little bit, and I've come up with three suspects, my usual suspects. This is the first one. Um, and it's not the world, by the way. It's like we decide that something, a topic, is boring, geography or history, or I'm not interested in maths. And we decide it's boring, so we're never going to learn about it, we're never going to read about it, we're never going to do anything. And for me, I think people's worlds shrink as a result, because they just go, right, that bit, I'm not interested in that bit, I'm going to be interested in this bit. So that's the usual suspect first, but it's never the topic, it's never the topic. Um, all my research says the topic is never to blame. Um, so maybe it's something else. Um, and one of the things is that we teach too much knowledge, we don't teach wisdom. Um, if you pass your test on how to ride a bike, can you actually ride a bike? And that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. We teach people in schools to regurgitate information. Um, and the best analogy for this, I saw at Monty Don or something like that. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing you don't put in a fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, we need to talk about wisdom. We need to pass on wisdom, not knowledge. Who cares if you can list the planet? So maybe the third suspect is the way that we touch, the way that we learn things. And in school, it can be a bit, well, it's boring because it's teaching you the wrong sort of thing. So I don't want to turn knowledge and wisdom into something amazing and fantastic. I want to make it as desirable as to take that ticket for, for women and gay men in the audience. Um, or as exciting as going to see Sons of Slay or something like that that people really talk about and, and get passionate about. So I decided this was my mission of possible. And quite honestly, it's probably easier than doing that wire trick that Tom. Tom Cruise did, so maybe I can just make kill death by PowerPoint and make it exciting and interesting for the rest of my life. I'm sure that's not going to be too difficult. Uh, so the first thing I tried this out on was a couple of years ago, and I was teaching Construction Law 101, one day of Construction Law to lawyers, um, which was a pretty tough sell, and we played Cluedo, and we played various games, and it went down brilliantly. Um, and recently I've been teaching cancer, and cancer is even bigger and harder and it's emotional and it's difficult. And I wanted to raise awareness about breast cancer symptoms because there's tons out there that people don't know about it. But I couldn't kind of get across how was I going to talk about boobs without it going all. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it all goes Benny Hill and page three and I really didn't want to do it like that. Because then you get people watching it for the wrong reasons and that's what I really wanted to do. So I was kind of like, how am I going to do this? and make it exciting and fun and interesting, and yet still be about breast cancer. And I woke up one morning with a circle and a triangle that just popped into my head. Um, and it all kind of went a bit play school and went around a window and a square window. But suddenly I kind of woke up and I just went, oh, I've got an idea. It doesn't need to be boobs, it can just be this. So I added a line and another circle, and with a few diagrams and a few drawings, I suddenly get a character, and she gets a story. And her name's Mary, and I don't know why she's called Mary, she just is. And something happens, one of her boobs gets bigger, and this whole story came to life. And it's really about teaching people about breast cancer, but it's kind of fun and quirky, and hopefully draws people in to learn about something in a non-threatening and fun way. Uh, so I decided that Mary's story is about breast cancer, and it's as simple as one, two, three, which is one line, two circles, and it lasts three minutes. So hopefully you'll go and look at it. But I also decided that actually making learning exciting and fun is also as simple as one, two, three. And the first thing is that you inspire people. You get them excited about learning. You talk about big, great, big things and, and visions and dreams and not tiny little things like passing an exam. So you get people inspired before you do anything else. And if you haven't got them inspired, you don't bother. And the second thing is, don't teach me about the types of bike. Get me on a bike, get me involved in something, get me touching it, feeling it get me doing 
learning something that's relevant. So if you involve me, I'm much more likely to learn. And the third thing is informing. But you don't pour information into people, you draw information out of people. You can talk to people until you're blue in the face, but if you actually get them and give them an experience where they learn something, by coming to here, you'll learn whether you like better watch or not. So, uh, this is my circus tent, and I put up. Uh, she's Mary's story, she's three minutes, she might just say good life um, and let me know if you find it as exciting as I do. Thank you very much. Think about Google uh, actually learning what you're interested in, and so the search results it throws up will be tailored to what you're interested in. And some people have said, Well, surely that's just going to uh, confirm people's prejudices, or you know, it's, it's going to narrow their outlook on, uh, on their experience of life, and the world is going to, to shrink. And I guess there's some truth in that argument, uh, and we like to think that uh, better culture is fighting that because we've no idea what the presentation is going to be, so people turn up and think, well, I mean, you know, who would have thought that I was going to be interested in the day job of Tintin, you know? Uh, that's, that's the kind of thing that can happen, and you just demonstrated what a, what a special place better culture has become. I mean, it's, it's enormous in, uh, in Leeds now, and people recognise it as a place where they can, they can turn up and they can actually discuss uh, counter cultural ideas, they can actually express ideas which aren't generally talked about or aired. So if anybody here has a passion that they feel, you know, that they can't really talk about,